This video goes along with the stress damage tutorial in the OmniBlast extension documentation. Stress damage is a new feature in the OmniBlast extension, debuting in version 0.11. This version can be found in Create 2022.3. With OmniBlast 0.11, all damage is based on a stress model, which solves for the internal pressures of a destructible in response to external accelerations applied to the pieces, that is, the support chunks that compose a destructible. I'm going to demonstrate this with a simple wall that I created using a mesh cube and scaling it in the X, Y, and Z dimensions. I've raised it out of the ground so that it sits on the ground. I've also applied a physics rigid body and collider API. When I run the simulation, you can see it's a dynamic rigid body. The first thing I'm going to do is fracture it into a large number of pieces. I'm setting the number of Voronoi sites to 1000, then pressing the Fracture Selected button. It takes a little time to complete. And now we have the Blast Basin instance. While it's selected, I'm going to recalculate attachment, which causes permanent bonds to be formed between the ground and the bottom of the destructible instance. We can now use the new settings found in the Instance Stress Settings panel of the Blast window. These are per instance values that control how the stress solver behaves. These are all described in the BLAST documentation, but initially you'll probably be most interested in these limits, which are pressure limits with units of megapascals. In particular, the compression limits, both elastic and fatal. These are the pressures that the destructible can withstand, beyond which damage is taken and bonds break. The elastic limit is the pressure at which bonds will start to deteriorate, and the fatal limit is the pressure at which bonds will always break. The tension and shear limits are negative by default, which signals BLAST to just use the compression values for those fields. This is a reasonable default behavior. As I mentioned before, all damage in BLAST is now done with the stress solver. The BLAST plugin's damage API, which is what's used by the debug or mouse damage UI, as well as impact damage, damage taken when there is a collision with a destructible, now feed chunk accelerations into the stress solver. The solver calculates the internal pressures on all bonds required to counteract the external accelerations. When those pressures exceed the given limits, then bonds take damage or break. I'll demonstrate this by first turning off the effects of gravity and rotation on the stress solver. This causes the stress damage system to behave very much like the old damage system. Since this is a large, heavy object, I'm going to increase its strength by increasing its elastic and fatal compression limits to 0.05 and 0.1 megapascals, respectively. I'll also increase the debug damage amount to 25,000 meters per second squared. This is the acceleration applied to the support chunks I click on. Pressing Shift-B and left mouse clicking, I apply damage across the bottom of the destructible. As you can see, the destructible is breaking as you'd expect, as the external acceleration applied to the hit chunks gives rise to pressure throughout the destructible, causing bonds to eventually break. Just like with the old damage system, I need to break all of the bonds across the wall before the top portion breaks off. Next, I'll turn on stress gravity and stress rotation. Stress gravity applies accelerations due to gravity to every support chunk every frame. Those additional accelerations lead to additional pressure in the system that will cause damage and fracture. Stress rotation calculates centrifugal acceleration in rotating bodies, and that leads again to more pressure and more damage. Now when I run with those enabled and apply damage, it behaves similarly at first. But the overhang I'm creating is leading to increasing pressure as the overhang grows and the area of the bonds supporting the overhang decreases. At some point, the pressure is too great, and the bonds break on their own.
We can make that happen sooner if we weaken the system by decreasing the pressure limits to, say, 0 0.025 and 0 0.05 megapascals. Since the wall is weaker, I don't have to hit it as hard, so I'll decrease the damage acceleration as well in order to have roughly the same effect. And there it goes. This has been a simple demonstration of stress-based damage in OmniBlast 0.11.